Hi, uh, my name is Stephen Gallagher, and this is my compatriot, Mohan Badu, the International Man of Mystery. And we are here to talk to you today about Apple. So, what is Apple? Apple is a, a business tool used to create, uh, uh, to create spreadsheets and to work with... Uh, with uh, what are you talking about? Well, That's Excel. Oh, it's Apple. Okay, okay, hold, hold on, hold on. Uh, all right, so Apple is a prize awarded every year by an international panel of scientists. No, scientific that's Nobel, Nobel Prize. You already changed the title of the talk. All right, Come all right, on. All right. Um, okay, so what it, uh, Apple is a, is a member of the resistance against the fascist organizations of the world. Now, no, 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 that's rebel. Ah. <laughs> Did you even prepare for this talk? I'm, Okay, I'm not going to answer that. From the top. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Apple actually is all of these things in a way. Uh, <laughs> there are many, many businesses out there uh, that rely on the extra packages that the Fedora project provides uh, on top of Red Hat Enterprise Linux and CentOS and the like. And in many ways, uh, we could, we could say that we deserve the Nobel Prize for all the, all the advances that we've helped enable in the scientific fields. Um, the, the scientific Linux and CERN, all are users, uh, very heavy users of, uh, of Apple. And lastly, of course, uh, being part of Fedora, Apple is naturally part of the rebellion against the, uh, against the proprietary empires of the world. Pause for applause. <laughs> <laughs> So, how many people here have heard of this thing, uh, RHEL 8? Anybody? Nobody? Okay, well, there's going to be a talk about that down the hall in a little while. Uh, you can go to that. Uh, but unfortunately, you're going to be lost. So, last, uh, last spring, uh, Red Hat, you know, as part of the daily news cycle, re revealed this new thing, RHEL 8. And you know, it was just rel seven with another number with an, with the number increased, right? Right? No. Oh, that's right. Um, it was really different in just about every way from rel seven. That it, honestly, we probably should have talked. To, we should have considered changing the name. Uh, uh, so why don't we talk? Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, the differences here? Yeah. So. As uh, Stephen here is saying, uh, the, the RHEL 7 and RHEL 8 are really different. And uh, even uh, the Apple 7 and Apple 8 are based upon RHEL 7 and RHEL 8 respectively. So when Apple 8 was set up, which was like five years ago, uh, the people who did the setup is not actually uh, working in this area. So it was not very much documented we need to figure out on our own like how it was set up and uh, how can we do it or replicate it in a way uh, so that we can set it up for Apple 8. So that was a big challenge to start with. And then, RHEL has modules. So. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm, sure, uh, I'm sure whoever came up with that idea uh, knew what they were doing. Absolutely, without question. Moving on. Then, um, so obviously modules are different. They are like sort of a virtual repo. So we never had a setup for Apple which has modules has in it and like separate virtual repos because Apple always had a pointer to one repo as its build root. So to figure it out, it was a challenge. And then we wanted to add Apple Playground. So it's a place where maintainers can play with Apple. Uh, you know, we're gonna explain more on that later on, but this is another thing that we added. It's sort of a new release. Yes. And then there is, when we try to uh, start working on Apple in staging, eh, it was not actually uh, as good as production, and there are a lot of things that are missing, a lot of services that are running the old versions, and a lot of data is missing. So we have to. It had, it had not been synced in what, like five months? So it did not look anything like <laughs> the production repo and um, the environment. And it was, 
Yeah, that was fun. Fun, yes. <laughs> So we need to tweak around and uh, you know finally get to a stage where we can at least build something in staging. And then, as I initially said, uh, there was not much documentation. The people are not around, so it's like a lot of trial and errors. Let's try this thing and see if it works. Uh, it didn't. Let's try another thing. Let's flip this switch over here. Uh, no, no, that will, that electrocuted smooge. Uh, I'll try this one. No, 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 that was Kevin. A uh. <laughs> <laughs> lot of trial and errors. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it took some time to figure it out. So, and now I want to talk about a playground first uh, because uh, how we did the setup and the changes that we made, uh, which we are going to explain in the next uh, slides, is going to apply for the play playground as well. Uh, Appalate Playground is sort of rawhide for Appalate. So, why we did this? Uh, there are like two reasons. One is um, we wanted to provide a place where maintainers can test their things, just like as in rawhide, and uh, don't want, uh, don't have to wait like 14 days or so to get it into the build route and start building other packages on top of it. So. Uh, this will help them uh, test their stuff right away, and uh, that's one of the reasons. And the other reason is Apple. Apple uh, to start with, Apple it doesn't have any RPMs to build against, so it will be harder for people who are maintaining Apple packages to test their things because none of the packages are available in the build route. So, and again, the 14 days turnaround time will kick in. So we decided to have something like a playground where people can test their things and their builds will be readily available and be prepared uh, whenever their other dependency packages are available in the stable repo. Yeah, and another major part of the uh, playground is it's meant to be a staging area too for big changes, uh, which in Apple 8 we're going to allow uh, large changes to land where we haven't in the past, uh, but they'll have, they have to land at a, a, a realm minor, minor release boundary. So if you want to if you want to bring in the newest version of KDE, for example, you might build it in uh, Playground, and then when when rel 8.2 lands, uh, then you can put you can merge it into the uh, stable repo at that time. So, uh, Appalachian Playground is in its own release, and uh, it has its own build route. Uh, we run composers nightly, which will be shipped, and uh, no body. In that case. So in this, among the set of things that we needed to deal with uh, with, RHEL, uh, with RHEL 8 was the fact that we now have this app stream repos repository, or application streams. And unlike RHEL 7, which basically had one big pile of RPMs and you always just took whatever the, the highest number was. With, uh, with RHEL 8, we now carry multiple different versions of things, sometimes uh, higher versions, sometimes lower versions. And, we, and our tooling in Koji and, uh, was not equipped to deal with that. And so what we needed to do was we needed to find a way to take the content that was published by Red Hat and then break it up because modules themselves are basically virtual repos sitting inside a single repo. So what we did was we took that repo, all of its metadata, and then broke it up into individual repos, one for every module and then one for all the stuff that wasn't in a module. Then we collected the set of things that we knew that needed to be in the build route, squished them back together, and stuffed that, uh, and stuffed that into a specialized uh, build route for Apple. And the tool that we did that was uh, called Groby Splitter. Okay. Then uh, another piece that we needed uh, we needed to make some changes to Koji uh, to be able to handle uh, generating a build route that may contain, let me start over. Traditionally, Koji would, would when generating a build route, perform a bunch of uh, sanity checks and make sure, and deduplication and, re and remove uh, you know, more than one copy of a, with a, with a, of a package with a, na with a given name. And all of these things interfere with the idea of actually sticking modules into the content. So we had to create a, what we called Koji bear mode uh, to just say, this is your input. It all needs to be there. Just, just don't touch it. <laughs> um, so we sent, we sent Mike McLean these nice you know, warm arm warmers, and he got right to work. The last part of the puzzle uh, for, uh, for dealing with the uh, rel mod, uh, 
AppStream data was that once we had constructed this build route, uh, we had to be able to apply it on top of a CH route for, in mock or a, you know, a, a container image that was in fact using the default module streams of, the, of this content. And because this new Koji build route repo was not modular, and DNF has uh, fail-safe capabilities that prevents it to protect you from accidentally installing a, a higher version of a non-modular RPM on top of a module that you have selected, such as if you, you know, pulled in a third-party repo and it happens to be offering a uh, package that, uh, that, that has a higher version, or, uh, you're the, or you have a partial repo sync and, the, and you're missing the metadata, this, it, this fail-safe prevented that from happening. So, we also have a feature called module hotfixes, which you can set on a particular repo that says, this repo is specifically allowed to override modular content. Uh, and it's intended for, you know, in, in RHEL production environments, to be able to ship out an emergency fix to a customer without having to do a full module generation until the next uh, scheduled uh, update cycle. So, hotfixes. And once that is figured out, it's much easier to set up the Koji side of things with, uh, Koji tags and build routes and targets, it's easier. But then uh, there is this question of, about playground, how the branch has requested for that. So we decided to use a, a thing called packages.config and test kit branches. How many of you have ever used or know about packages.config in test kit? Wow, no one. Nobody. Wow. That's great. <laughs> so uh, I know a lot of you. Uh, uh, how many people are maintaining packages in Fedora? Okay. Yes. <laughs> so one of the pain points in uh, maintaining packages in Fedora is like you have to build uh, uh, package builds for each and every release going into different branches, right? Uh, so uh, there is this packages.cfg uh, file which will allow you mention the releases that you want to build against. And once you submit for package build, it will look at this packages.config file and it will build for all the releases, whatever you specify in the package.config. So you don't have to switch branches and like do changes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, as long as they're all going to plan to build from the same git commit, yeah. you might as well just build uh, just one command. Um, so, uh, so we wanted to use that feature um, to build for Appalachian Playground. So we have to make these changes in uh, Fed package. When they, whenever they request a, a Apple 8 branch, it should automatically request Apple 8 Playground, and as well as it should handle creating the package.config file in um, Apple 8 branch because we want people to build against Apple 8 Playground as well whenever they submit a build into Apple 8 because not many people would be concentrating on Playground. Right, and the other thing to note is that if you ha when you want to separate them, when something is going to go into playground that sh for experimental purposes, all you have to do is remove that file, and uh, then you can s is commit to each of them separately. Yeah, and to handle that part of things, uh, we have to tweak a FedSM admin, which actually processes the tickets. So that uh, we tweak that to create all these files, um, and as well as create the branches, and. All right, That's so modular, so in Apple 8.0, uh, we were able to, we were able to build against modular content from the rel app streams, but we weren't able to actually have uh, people build modules themselves for Apple 8. So now as far, in 8.1, we finally gotten through some of these hurdles and, it, and Mohan will talk a little bit about the configuration uh, issues we had to face with that in a bit. But at this point, uh, it is possible to build modules for, uh, for Apple, and in fact, it is uh, now the default. If you are building a, f a package against Fedora, it will also build it against Apple 8. So you get a module, and you get a module, and you get a module, but you don't deserve one. Yeah. And then you get a module, and everybody gets a module. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, stop. <laughs> <laughs> what about Apple uh, Playground modules? Uh, that's still a bit of a work in progress. It turns out that there was a, there's a little bit of difficulty in generating modules uh, specifically for Apple uh, Playground, but it's also probably less important because uh, you can always generate a stream from Apple standard that is more, uh, 
less stable, shall we say, uh, and, pl and play with that and just make it, uh, and just allow people to opt into that. So it's probably not that big a deal, but we are working to try and figure out how we can get uh, it to mm -hmm. also generate playground. Uh, probably by Rel 8, Dr. Pratt. Yeah, we're pro we're probably around Rel 8 3. In conclusion, computers were a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> also, don't trust a road runner. <laughs> um. If you have questions, uh, you may direct them at this man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, uh, but seriously, uh, we actually, we had planned this, we had put in this talk for a half hour segment and we were told we were getting a half hour segment and then the schedule came out and we had an hour segment. So we're going to just blame him that his 15 minute portion of this talk uh, was supposed to be now. And, uh, and actually, yeah, he was supposed to talk about more about grub splitter and uh, he did actual setup on, around that thing. Um, so he has more pain points on that, but... But you were going you to go into a bit of detail about uh, the configuration changes that we needed for... Uh, oh, uh, it's composed. actually completed that... Uh, yeah, we talked about that. A lot of changes. That, that, was, that was very vague. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the uh, configuration changes that, uh, that I had to make uh, in the Berlin side of things is... Uh, the changes related to uh, Bodhi and how it works for Apple 8 and as well as the modules. Uh, because as we were saying, like uh, we never actually uh, enable mo modules for, uh, from L Apple side of things. So those, those are the biggest changes that we have to make and then how we sync them uh, for the mirror manager side of things, though that's another challenge. Uh, and uh, the composers. We never actually did uh, Apple composers nightly. So initially we started with Apple 8 composers just with the RPMs, but then we added Apple 8 modules, so we have to add that as well. Um, but those are something that are related to Rel inside of things. Um, unless if you have more questions regarding technicality into that, um, we can. Yeah. Why don't we, why don't we uh, open the floor up to. Yeah. Uh, general questions. I'm sure that you have some. I thought you have some. Yes. Uh, sorry, the question was, can I opt out of making Apple 8 modules? Yes, you can. Um, you just, uh, you have to specify in your, in your module, mod MD. in your module you metadata. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry? It's funny that he asked that yeah, it, uh, the comment was, uh, it's funny that the person who asked that question was in fact one of the module uh, team leads. So, <laughs> uh, I believe he is just being a bit wise. <laughs> sure. Uh, it's a common question, he says. He was, uh, he was ask, asking it by proxy. <laughs> wow. Come on, there's got to be a question out there yeah. somewhere. Okay, what about switching from module back to RPM? Okay, starting with the hard questions. I like this guy. All right. The question was, what about switching uh, back to RPMs uh, from modules? The short answer is that right now, that is a limitation in the technology that is being worked on. Um, we are probably going to need new metadata for it, and so we're going to need to make some, uh, some changes to DNF to accommodate it. The, it. This is something that we don't just want. It, it is an absolute critical requirement, and it will be resolved, but it isn't today. Is there time for general Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's why I was asking. So I remember that when I was actually working with Apple, there used to be a problem that sometimes there was a newer version of the software that was in RHEL, because somebody actually needed it. How do you guys handle that situation now with modules, you know, kicking in, maybe even more complicated? How do you make sure All right. that you have versions Okay, so the question was, uh, sometimes uh, there would be periods where Apple would have a newer version of a piece of, of an RPM than was available in RHEL. Well, and usually, uh, well, usually that, was only, that only happened on a over a short period and it was usually a result of uh, miscommunication that uh, what, what would end up happening is that RHEL would freeze at a certain point, not let the uh, maintainer in Apple know, and then they would do a release that ended up having a higher one. and then. Usually what happened is we'd end up just blocking and removing it from the Apple repositories. So if, Today, oh, sorry. Oh, if something like that happens, generally they will come back, uh, come back to release engineering and ask us like, hey, uh, this is wrong. Then we'll go back. Then uh, we will uh, block it in Koji. Um, 
So, but that doesn't happen often. Yeah, it would, usually communication is better than yeah. that. But also, uh, one of the things that modularity is give, going to give us that's really nice is the fact that Apple can now start uh, shipping uh, module streams uh, that are not available in RHEL of the same software. So, uh, and it, they can ship it even if it's in RHEL, uh, a RHEL RPM as opposed to a RHEL module. And so we, get, we now finally have the ability in Apple to say, yeah, I want to ship something uh, newer than RHEL. And before, we just had to say, you can't do that because you might break their system. Now they can at least will have the, op the they will at least have the opportunity to opt into that if they're if they're willing to do so. So and in particular, you can build a module that overrides non-modular content. It does not have to be built as a module in Rel up front. Right. So the the, uh, the comment from Stephen Tweedy was that uh, modules override non-modular content. So you can build a module for and to replace anything that is in RHEL, whether or not it was in a module in RHEL. Okay. So if any, like with these modules, do you see that there would be a situation where a migration of RHEL that Apple would be actually possible and very possible for New York, as long as you can start something from Apple, like you are unsupported, and actually, like, but then there's some sort of migration of the system with your version, let's say. So, so is it a module, maybe, you know, it would be possible? I think, the, uh, I'm going to try to rephrase your question because it's. Migration system versus using Apple. So, are you talking about system upgrades? Yes. Okay, so the upgrade process uh, is still to be determined. It, uh, upgrades from something like RHEL 8 to a, to a presumed RHEL 9 or 10 or whatever this, uh, what, you know, or Infinity, whatever they decide to call it. Um, th that'll largely be done in the realm of Leap. Which may, in fact, uh, you know, th that's one thing we should keep in mind is maybe we can have it just say, you know, yum, disable any module that isn't in our whitelist, do the upgrade, and then see if you can turn it back on. If you can, great. If you can't, they can deal with it then. So, but, but that's a, that's a hypothetical. I haven't given that any thought more than that okay. question than okay. since you asked that so question. Right. So. Yeah. Well, the, the, the source code is not related to the RHEL version, but the binaries are still built for this version. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I imagine probably none of that got onto the mic, and I have apologize, but I can't. I don't think I can recreate it all. So. <laughs> and ideally, we would like that for the order too. Right. Okay. I'm, I'm going to try and do a very quick summary. Stephen said a lot of things that were right. <laughs> <laughs> um, which honestly, no, everybody already knew. But, uh, okay, so the, uh, one of the things that uh, modules help with is that we are going to be able, down the road, to be able to say, to build the same module for Fedora 29 and 30 for, uh, and 31 and for RHEL 8 and RHEL 9 uh, from the same git commit, essentially, same, same exact source starting point. And then on upgrades, it, sh it should be able to just say, okay, Give me the version of the, the, the same stream I have selected that matches the uh, system to which I am upgrading. Uh, doing that for RHEL is a, is a major requ uh, requirement and is absolutely going to be uh, done in advance of whatever the next new major release is called. Um, with Apple, that'll probably have to be on Apple's, uh, Apple's side to make sure it works. And that will probably tra almost certainly trail the uh, RHEL release mm -hmm. by some months. Did I see a hand over there? No. Any more? We got time. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing but. You look. You look. You sir look like you have a question to ask. Do you want me to ask a question? I do. <laughs> um, I actually did have a question. So, um, do you have any policy guidance or? Modularize myself um, to kind of guide them of 
to make sure that they understand the benefits of why and when to use modularity versus I'm just giving myself a bunch of extra work uh, and there's no real value. So, and, and also clarifying expectations. If you build a module, here's what we expect of you to maintain it for compatibility and okay. So uh, to get that in a nutshell, uh, do we have packaging guidelines and, advisor, and, and advice to give uh, potential packagers of modules in Apple for when is building it as a module the right choice, when is it not optimal, I think that's okay. um, and, when, uh, and when, and if you do so, what are the trade-offs? What are, what are you uh, going to be, what are you going to have to do to maintain it? Um, you know, what are, your, what are your guarantees regarding its life cycle and so on. Uh, some of that exists today. Uh, we're, we're adding more as questions get asked because uh, being engineers and experts of, of the technology, we're not always the right people to figure out what do you need to know to get it done. So uh, every time somebody comes with a, to us with a question, we're adding to the docs at uh, docs.fedoraproject.org under the modularity sections. Brian? The question was, if I want to build modules in Apple, when do I get the tools to build it locally on my uh, personal machine before I build it in Apple? Um, you have them. They're, they exist today. Uh, we, have, we have the ability to run the uh, module build service uh, in, in offline, local only mode. You, you have to pre-cache the build root stuff, but you can, you can build it locally. Um, I don't think so. It is not, MBS is not yet available in Apple itself, but um, you can build from Fedora. And uh, also, uh, if anyone's interested, the, the set of st the steps necessary to accomplish that is actually not that high. Uh, I, I wrote a blog post about how you can actually fake it without, it, without any special tools, just the uh, traditional RPM tools, and create repo stuff. So uh, I can link that to you later if you're, if you're interested. No. <laughs> On this network, I'm not doing a live demo. I'm, we are lucky enough that, the, that slides.com worked. <laughs> uh, well, if there are no questions, uh, Mike, you look like you have several, actually. <laughs> All right. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank oh, wait, 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 wait. Yep. We, have, we have a question. Are there any plans for CentOS Stream and Apple? Uh, plans is a strong word. <laughs> uh, I, my best guess is that uh, CentOS Stream is going to end up looking fairly similar to what RHEL does. So if we want, uh, once we figure out the playground situation, it'll probably be the same solution that would allow us to just add a, a, a new platform that uh, builds against CentOS Stream as well. <laughs>